And joining us now for our daily intelligence brief, Pete Hoekstra, my old colleague on Capitol Hill, the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Pete, it is great to have you Skyping in today. Hey, great to see you, J.D. So at long last, you and I have known of uh, Chinese mischief, for lack of a better term, Chinese espionage for a long, long time. It's not exactly a well-guarded secret, but now the Justice Department files charges. Give me your take on this entire situation. Well, you know, as you started out with, we've known that the Chinese, uh, you know, they've been going after different parts of the U.S. government and different parts of the U.S. economy uh, for years. Uh, you know, heaven knows why they'd want to target, uh, you know, the U.S. Congress. But I think while you and I were in Congress, uh, you know, there were reports they got into Frank Wolf's uh, files in his office. Congressman Frank Wolf has been one of the strongest advocates in the U.S. Congress fighting for human rights uh, in China. So they targeted him. They've targeted the Pentagon. But they, at the same time they were targeting all these government insta installations, they were also always targeting and trying to get at trade secrets, uh, you know, the world of, of commerce, uh, trying to steal patents, trying to steal, uh, you know, in new intellectual property before it even became commercialized. And today, the uh, you know the Justice Department said, "Hey, we're taking action against the Chinese." Why today? Who knows? Uh, that may have been a political calculation, uh, but it's a needed first step in terms of bringing you know cyber crime under control. Well, we, we talk about what has happened, uh, for lack of a better term, government versus government. But this realm of cyber spying in the private sector is, is no less concerning. But but I am intrigued just to get your evaluation of something we we hear about the chinese and their expansionist intentions to turn the pacific into a lake basically they believe they will be the world's preeminent superpower by mid-century if not before we know amidst great fanfare the chinese said look we have our first aircraft carrier taking a look at the chinese aircraft carrier how much of that is based on stolen american technology well, it's one of the things that we are always worried about on the Intel uh, Committee. You know, you would see the, na the latest release, whether it's an aircraft carrier, whether it's a satellite, whether it's a new plane, a new stealth fighter. Uh, those things always seem to have striking similarities to U.S. technology uh, that had just been introduced and had just become commercialized. Uh, you know, what, what happens uh, when the Chinese steal these commercial secrets is you know, they shrink their development time down and they shrink their costs down. Uh, you know, it's a whole lot easier to steal secrets uh, and to steal technology than to develop it and pay for it yourself. I think that a lot of the technology development that you've seen uh, coming out of China, both in the military sector and in the private sector, is actually a result of them stealing technology, not only from our corporations, but also going into our research universities and in some cases, stealing technology and commercializing it before the U.S. folks who actually developed the, the new breakthroughs had the time to patent it. it uh, they're remarkably good at getting to where we don't want them to be and stealing this information from us. Which prompts another question. On those campuses of major research universities, how many Chinese, quote, scholars have been welcomed in to, uh, to essentially come and uh, ostensibly study, but perhaps engage in this kind of educational and research and development espionage? Well, you know, there's, there've been, there's a lot of foreign students uh, that have come and visited and have studied at our university campuses, our research universities. Uh, there's a number of cases out there that have been prosecuted where uh, these individuals studying at our universities uh, have been identified as stealing technology for the Chinese, probably the Chinese government, uh, and they've been prosecuted for it. So what the exact number is, who knows, uh, but we know that it is a strategy of the Chinese government, of Chinese industry to get into our research institutions, whether it's in the private sector or whether it is in the university sector, and get our technology as early in the process as they can. Pete, it's a huge, we'll stay on it's top. a huge threat to our economy. Uh, Pete, we will stay on top of this unfolding story with China. We want to switch to another area of the world where, again, 
your instincts and experience have proven prescient, and that is Nigeria, as a Nigerian army official says that country's armed forces would be unable to successfully fight Islamist terrorist group Boko Haram. This soldier for the Nigerian army says they're only given AK-47s to fight Boko Haram with. Often the guns don't work. They're given only two magazines, which comes down to about 60 bullets each. According to this unnamed soldier, members of the Nigerian army are also frustrated because they often are not paid for months at a time. So we hear this from a source with inside, uh, from inside the Nigerian army. Pete Hoekstra, what do you make of these comments? Does it in fact uh, point out what you said earlier about uh, the Nigerians perhaps sitting down to negotiate with this terrorist group? Yeah, I mean, I think those comments, uh, you know, I take them at face value. Everything, uh, I've traveled to Nigeria a number of different times. I've been in that part of the world. Uh, but what we do know from, you know, countries like Nigeria and, and countries, you know, the, the second tier, not economically or whatever, second tier militarily uh, countries, uh, in many cases, the terrorist groups, uh, criminal gangs, uh, drug gangs, and these types of things, international criminal uh, organizations, they are much better trained, they are much better equipped uh, than the law enforcement and the armies in the countries where they are acting. Uh, and I think that's exactly the case, what you see here in Nigeria, that Boko Haram uh, can fight uh, on a level playing ground, if not a superior playing ground, meaning they are better equipped uh, than the Nigerian army. That doesn't surprise me at all. And in terms of intelligence, Pete, last year, before the mass abduction of these Nigerian schoolgirls, the, uh, the president of the nation, good luck Jonathan, said he thought Boko Haram members had made their way into high levels of government and the military. So if we intend to share intelligence with the Nigerian army, would we just be tipping off Boko Haram? You've got to assume that most of the information and the intelligence that we would share with the Nigerian government uh, Boko Haram would have uh, would be aware of that information relatively quickly. Uh, again, these countries, uh, the criminal gangs, Boko Haram, they do a better job of infiltrating the government uh, than what the governments have done in terms of infiltrating the infrastructure of these terrorist organizations. JD, bottom line, these guys are good uh, and they are dangerous. Pete, we get another comment, I guess a mea culpa from our FBI director, James Comey. He said he initially underestimated the terrorism threat, including Al-Qaeda affiliates and offshoots. Uh, with all due respect to the FBI director, isn't that an administration-wide affliction with the current president and his, uh, his team of cabinet officers? Uh, you can go through a long litany. We underestimated the, the capabilities and the character uh, of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. We underestimated uh, the strength of al-Qaeda and radical jihadists in Libya. Uh, we've underestimated their capabilities in Africa. Now, specifically, we admit that we underestimated their capabilities in Nigeria. We underestimated the capabilities of al-Qaeda uh, on the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, you, know, you only see, it seems, with this administration, sometimes it seems you only see what you want to see, and that's what they you know, what the story was. We see an Al-Qaeda on the run uh, and being decimated. In reality, that's what they wanted to see. But in reality, you see an Al-Qaeda uh, whose affiliates uh, are very deadly and very dangerous, and they're gaining in strength. They're not losing uh, capabilities. They're gaining capabilities. Pete Hoekstra, a little more than a minute left. Let's come around full circle now. We began with cyber spying. Now let's talk about what is transpiring overseas. Germany apparently moving to ban tech companies cooperating with our own national security agency. Your take on that? Uh, not a surprise. It's one more of the, the drip, 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 steady drip from the leaks that we saw from, from Edward Snowden countries now saying, hey, if there's indications that American companies uh, may be cooperating or facilitating, uh, you know, gaining access into our cyber world in our country, we're going to ban those companies from doing business, uh, at least with uh, with our government. No government business for us. It's, uh, the Germans do it themselves. Everyone does it, but the Germans are taking steps to uh, to limit our economic opportunity in Europe.
Pete Hoekster, as always, we appreciate your insights in our daily intelligence brief, and we look forward to visiting with you again on these subjects and other intelligence matters. Now, if you want to weigh in on this discussion, we'd love to hear from you. Why don't you tweet me your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. We're coming right back.